Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Closet Catholic, and on this episode, I wanted to start talking about my journey into the Catholic Church. And this is going to be over the course of several videos. I don't want to make them super long, uh, and I also wanted to spread it out on multiple videos so it's easier to just see the different parts of my journey and the different things I was wrestling with. And I thought a good place to start would be just to give an overview of that journey to kind of introduce the next set of videos that I'm going to be working on. So my journey into the Catholic Church really started, uh, well, a long time ago. I mean, it's been kind of uh, at different points throughout my life. And you know how it is. You look back on your life and you can see different areas where uh, God was at work or God was moving you uh, to bring you to a place where you are now. And of course, as time goes on, you look back and you'll see other things that you didn't notice before. And that's really true for my story as well in regards to Catholicism. But it really didn't start becoming something I was aware of and something that I really started to wrestle with until uh, somewhere around uh, five or six, uh, maybe even seven or eight years ago, uh, when I began to wrestle with specific things that uh, I began to engage with while I was serving as a pastor. And while serving as a pastor, one of the things I always have felt is very important in regards to teaching and preaching is uh, doing the work of deconstruction as well as construction. And what I mean by that is uh, one of the things I would often uh, teach my people and one of the things I would talk about a lot with fellow pastors was that uh, in being a spiritual leader, you have to spend just as much, if not more time, deconstructing bad theology uh, as time spent constructing and teaching good theology. So the way that I would approach a lot of my sermons and a lot of my studies and basically almost everything I did as a pastor that involved me speaking uh, was I really wanted to get to the heart of what we believed as Christians and the heart of what the Bible taught. I didn't want to make a lot of assumptions uh, and just uh, build off of these presuppositions that I had or that my people had. I really wanted to do a lot of that work of deconstruction and get to the heart of what does it mean to be a Christian, right? Let's get to the roots of things. And as a main part of that process, and again, this really started more overtly several years ago, was that I began to ask very fundamental questions in the pursuit of just being a better pastor and being able to articulate the faith better for myself as well as for my congregants. So in the process of doing that, in the process of, again, getting down to the core of what does it mean to be a Christian, what do the scriptures teach, one of the things I had to do personally was wrestle with a lot of my own assumptions about the faith and a lot of my own presuppositions. The things that I've just assumed about Christianity throughout the years, but I never really wrestled with, okay, are these true? Are these accurate? Are these consistent with what scripture teaches? Are they consistent with what the church has taught historically? Uh, what are the things that I'm just assuming that I never realized I was assuming? And wrestling with those assumptions led me to ask questions that I really didn't expect to be asking when I started the process of just being a pastor and wanting to teach my people and wanting to be more faithful uh, as a spiritual leader. And these questions that began to develop, again, as a process of wrestling with my own assumptions, they really became crisis points for me. I mean, they were very serious questions that I that once they popped in my head, <laughs> or once they developed, or once they grew, or however you're you know, you want to phrase that, I really couldn't escape them. I couldn't just say, well, these are questions that are inconsequential. They're really just a fodder for theologians, as one of my uh, former congregants used to say. Uh, they were things that really hit at the core of what does it mean to be a Christian? What is this life all about? And I couldn't just escape it. I mean, they were just as serious as the question, does God exist? You can't just escape that question. Right? I mean, you really have to wrestle with that if you want to be a Christian. Does God, exist, does God exist or not? You can't just push that off to the side and say, eh, I'll deal with that later. It doesn't really matter. It's all secondary. It was questions like that that I began to wrestle with. Not that question in particular. I had already wrestled with that one before, and, and it's uh, settled in my mind and in my heart. Uh, but these were things 
uh, these were other questions uh, that I couldn't escape. And so these questions that were really major for me are the things that I want to focus on in the coming videos, but I'll give a brief summary here of the four major questions that I began to wrestle with as a pastor that eventually led me to Catholicism. And the first thing I really began to wrestle with was worship. Uh, more specifically, what is necessary about the Christian worship service? Because we understand that it is a necessary part of the Christian life, but why? The next thing I began to wrestle with is history. In particular, does my denomination, my particular denomination, have roots that go back to the early church? Does it have legitimate roots? Does it have a legitimate basis for existing historically? And are we in alignment with what those first Christians believed, the things that the apostles taught, the things that their followers received, and held as this is the Christian faith? And not just the beliefs, but also the practices. Does my denomination, does what I do as a pastor, does it mirror what the early Christians believed to be the core beliefs and the core practices of Christianity and of being followers of Christ? The third thing I wrestled with was the biblical canon itself. So these are questions like, where do we get the Bible? And also, is the Bible that we use today the same as the Bible that was used and recognized by the early Christians? Or in other words, does the canon of scripture that we use, and in my denomination in particular, do we recognize as scripture the same things that the early Christians recognized as scripture? And this one was a major one for me because my background is in biblical studies. And so some people might not care that much about, you know, the biblical canon might not be that big of a deal. For me, it was. So that was, this was a big one for me to wrestle with, but that's, that's beside the point. The last thing that uh, I wrestled with that led me to Catholicism was the matter of authority. And in particular, the question that kind of revolves around this subject for me was, of all the expressions of Christianity, all the different Protestant denominations, uh, all the different expressions of Christianity like Catholicism, like Orthodoxy, how can we have confidence? And I meant this, you know, obviously more specific to me in, in my denomination and my beliefs. I guess, how can I have confidence that the faith that I follow, the faith that I live out, the beliefs that I hold, the doctrine that I recognize is more accurate than all the others. And maybe another way of putting that, so maybe this is sort of a secondary question to that, is by what standard do we determine a proper interpretation of scripture and necessary beliefs as Christians? Or at the very least, how do we determine what is healthy theology and what is unhealthy theology? What's the standard that we use to determine that? And that's a big deal, because out of all the expressions of Christianity, they can't all be right. So at the very least, some of them have to be more right than others, and maybe it's possible that one expression of Christianity is the most correct, or maybe even fully true. So that's what I wrestled with with the, the issue of authority. And funnily enough, one thing I want to point out is that throughout this process that I worked through, I never sought to either prove or disprove Catholicism. That wasn't even on my radar. These were simply the questions that I began to wrestle with as a Protestant pastor. And over the course of several years of processing these and working through these and pursuing kind of the follow-up questions that, that flowed from all of this, what really ended up happening was it was simply a matter of me saying, these are the questions I have. I need answers for them. And I began to recognize my denomination and Protestantism in general can't provide me answers to these questions. And so I had to look at, okay, well, maybe there's other expressions of Christianity that can address these questions. And of course, there was a particular expression of Christianity that answered these questions and answered them very thoroughly and very consistently and uniformly. And that's how I found the truth of the Catholic Church. So one way to summarize my journey is more that in wrestling with these questions, I began to realize the truth of the Catholic Church as an accident than anything else. 
But anyway, that's just sort of a summary of my journey into the Catholic Church. And I'll unpack those in the upcoming videos for you, which I'm looking forward to doing. I mean, this is my story. It's my journey. And maybe some of this will resonate with you. Maybe you're asking some of the same questions or you know people who are asking the same questions. So I'm looking forward to offering my perspective as a Protestant pastor of what that looked like for me. And even some of them I'm still wrestling with a little bit today. So I look forward for those videos coming out and I hope you're looking forward to them as well. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment down below, reach out to me if you'd like. That information is in the description if you want to do that. My email is closetedcatholic at gmail.com. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can get notifications of when those videos do come out. Thank you again for joining me and I will see you around the Tiber.